Dear students, myself Dr. Sudharani, working as lecturer in chemist, Silver Jubilee Government College. And today we are going to discuss about the conductometric titrations. So before going to uh, see the what is meant by conductometric titrations, I would like to give you a brief idea about a titration, end point and types of titrations. So, what is meant by a titration? Titration is a, a process in which a standard reagent is added to a solution of an analyte until the reaction between the reagent and analyte is to be complete. Here the standard reagent means a reagent whose concentration is known to us and an analyte means whose concentration is to be determined means a titration is a process in which the standard reagent whose concentration is known to us is added to a solution of an analyte or means whose concentration is not known to us until the reaction between reagent and analyte is to be complete. So, based on the type of reaction between this reagent and analytes, these titrations are categorized into four types acid based titrations, complexometric titrations, precipitation titrations, and redox titrations. The in acid based titrations, usually we will observe the neutralization of acid by base with the help of acid base indicators. The commonly used acid base indicators in our laboratories are methyl orange, methyl red and phenaphthalene. We by using these acid base indicators one can determine the neutralization point or end point or equivalence point of this acid base titrations. And next one is complexometric titrations where we can observe the formation of complex from the metal and ligand. Here also we can observe the end point, we can determine the end point by using complexometric indicators. The usual complexometric indicator for EDTA titrations are areochrome black tree. And the third one is precipitation titrations where we can observe an insoluble salt formation. And fourth one is redox titrations. Here we can observe the reduction and oxidation process of oxidizing and reducing agents. By using the redox indicators, we, one can determine the end point of the redox titrations. Usually we can use uh, uh, diphenylamine as redox indicator and in some cases we can observe the auto redox indicators like that. So, now we will see what is meant by an equivalence point and end point. So, though they are same by looking they are same equivalence point and end point, but actually according to definition they are not the same. So, the what is meant by an equivalence point means it is the point in a titration when the amount of added standard reagent is exactly equal to the amount of analyte. This we can best understand by seeing this example. The equivalence point of NaCl with silver nitrate occurs after exactly one mole of silver ions has been added for each mole of chloride ions. Okay, this is the equivalence point and the equivalence point we cannot determine through experimentally, but we can observe the physical change associated with the condition of chemical equivalence. This physical change observed is nothing but end point of that titration. Now coming to the conductometric titrations. The titrations in which conductance values are used to determine the end point of various titrations such as acid alkali displacement and precipitation titrations. But uh, we have given the above examples no acid base complex matter where we are using the volumes, but here we are uh, determining the end point 
based on conductance values. By using conductance values, we can determine the end point of acid base titrations, displacement titrations and even precipitation titrations. Those titrations are called as conductometric titrations. The basic principle involved in the conductometric titrations is the electrical conductance of a solution at a constant temperature depends upon the number, charge and mobility of ions present in it. Usually the conductance at a particular temperature depends on its number and mobility of ions present in it. So, by, by based on this principle we can determine the end point of uh, various titrations. And now coming to the general experimental procedure performing the conductometric titrations in laboratory. The first step is a solution to be titrated is taken in a beaker and which is again kept in a water bath for maintaining constant temperature throughout the experiment. And a conductivity cell is dipped in the beaker and finally connected to the circuit. The titrant is added from a burette. We should uh, fill this burette um, with the titrant and which is added from the burette. The solution is stirred with the help of glass root. The solution present in the beaker is stirred with the help of glass root, glass rod and the conductance is measured for each addition. So, due to the addition of definite amount, a fixed amount of titrant should be added to the a solution amount of solution. The ions in the latter are replaced by former. The ions which are present in the uh, beaker, the uh, means the solution present in the beaker contains ions. These ions are replaced by the ions which are present in the titrant. So, resulting a change in the conductance values are observed means one ion is replaced by another ion due to the addition of titrant obviously its mobility changes hence finally we can observe the change in conductance value. And finally, these conductance values are plotted against the volume of titrant added we will observe a two linear curves and the intersection point of these two linear curves gives the end point of that titration. And here we can see the uh, conductometric experimental setup from our laboratory. So, this is the cell conductivity cell which contains electrodes and this is the titrant present in the burette and here it is a solution which is present in a small beaker and which is kept in a another beaker which contains water, water bath and finally this is connected to the circuit. So, this is the experimental setup for doing conductometric titrations. And here in this lecture I am discussing the acid base titrations through conductometrically. So, the first one is strong acid versus strong base titration, strong acid like hydrochloric acid and strong base like NaOH. So, first the HCl is taken in the conductivity cell and the base in the burette. We should take a HCl uh, acid in the um, beaker and in that we should keep the conductivity cell and base NaOH in the burette. Initially the conductance of HCl is noted. So, first we need to record the conductance of uh, our acid that is HCl which is actually a high value which is due to the presence of uh, its H plus fast moving hydrogen and chloride ions and also it, which is due to the highly ionizing capacity of hydrochloric acid. After the gradual addition of NaOH to the HCl, a fixed amount of NaOH to the HCl, the fast moving H plus ions are replaced by slow moving sodium ions. This we can observe in the following equation. So, here it is a HCl due to its high ionization capacity, I am writing in um, ionic forms H plus and chloride in aqueous solution and we are adding a strong base again it is I am writing in uh, ionization form. So, Na plus and OH minus. 
So, due to these addition to the HCl, the fast moving H plus ions are replaced by slow moving Na plus ion, which results the formation of an unionized water molecule. So, on continuous addition of NaOH, the conductance of the resulting solution goes on decreases because the mobility of H plus ions, the number or the mobility of H plus ion is more when compared to sodium ions until the acid has been completely neutralized. We should add the addition of NaOH from buret to the conductivity cell. Further, the addition of NaOH results the introduction of fast moving OH minus ions, hence after reaching a certain point, conductance again increases. So, after complete neutralization of acid, then if we add further the NaOH from the burette, then we can observe the increase in conductance value which is due to the introduction of fast moving hydroxyl ions. And after getting the conductance values, if you plot the conductance values on y axis and volume of NaOH added on x axis, we will observe the two linear curves. The intersection point of these two curves will get the end point of the strong acid versus strong base titration or by extrapolating this to x axis, we can get the volume of NaOH required for the neutralization of strong acid that is HCl. Now coming to the weak acid versus strong base titration, suppose weak acid like acetic acid and strong base like NaOH. So, initially uh, the acetic acid has lower conductance which is due to its poor, poor dissociation. After the addition of NaOH, first conductance decreases due to the formation of completely ionized salt that is sodium acetate which suppresses the ionization of weak acid due to common ion effect. However, the conductance soon increases because of the increase in concentration of Na plus and acetate ions. So, initially the conductance value of acetic acid is low which is due to poor ionization of acetic acid. But after addition of NaOH, the conductance is still decreases which is again due to the common ion effect which is caused by the completely ionized salt formation that is sodium acetate formation. The formed sodium acetate is in equilibrium with the electrolyte that is acid, weak acid, acetic acid that is why the conductance again decreases. And again after some time of addition of the NaOH to the conductivity cell, the conductance soon increases because of the increase in number of Na plus and acetate ions. This we can observe in the equation. After complete neutralization of acetic acid, further addition of NaOH will increase the conductance value. We can observe after neutralization or after certain point if we add further uh, NaOH to the conductivity cell, we can observe the increase in conductance value. This is again due to the introduction of fast moving hydroxyl ions into the solution. Then after getting the conductance values, if we plot the graph between conductance versus volume of NaOH added, we will observe a curve like this. So, this decrease is due to which is acetic acid conductance value and first initially it is decreases after addition of NaOH and after which is due to the common ion effect caused by sodium acetate formation which suppresses the acetic acid ionization and later further addition of NaOH increases its conductance which is due to the increase in concentration of acetate and Na plus ions. And after neutralization of the acid, again conductance increases which is due to the introduction of fast moving hydroxyl ions. And the third one is strong acid versus weak base, strong acid like hydrochloric acid and weak base like ammonium hydroxide. So, as we know that initially it has high conductance which is due to its high ionization. 
when a weak base is added to a strong acid its conductance goes on decreases which is due to the replacement of fast moving h plus ions by the slow moving ammonium ions this we can observe in this equation here hcl i am representing in the form of ionic species but ammonium hydroxide which is a, a weak base uh, that, that's why i am writing in the neutral form and he eats ammonium chloride formation again which is a completely ionized state that is why I am representing in ionic state and the formation of unionized water. So, after neutralization of the strong acid further addition of ammonium hydroxide will not show any change in the conductance value which is due to the formation of ammonium chloride which suppresses the ionization of ammonium hydroxide means after complete neutralization of HCl by ammonium hydroxide after certain point if we add further ammonium hydroxide to the conductivity cell and we will not observe any change in the conductance value which is due to the formation of ammonium chloride which suppresses the ionization of weak base that is ammonium hydroxide. Then if you plot the conductance values versus volume of ammonium hydroxide added, we will observe a curves like this and which is due to the decrease in conductance of HCl after adding ammonium hydroxide and after certain point we will we'll not observe any change in the conductance which is due to the common ion effect caused by ammonium chloride. The last one is weak acid versus weak base like acetic acid and ammonium hydroxide. So, we know that acetic acid has lower conductance due to its poor dissociation, but after the addition of ammonium hydroxide first conductance decreases due to the formation of completely ionized salt which suppresses the ionization of weak acid due to common ion effect. However, the conductance soon increases because of the increase in concentration of ammonium and acetate ions. After the neutralization point or end point further addition of ammonium hydroxide will not show any change in the conductance value which is owing to the formation of ammonium acetate which suppresses the ionization of ammonium hydroxide due to common ion effect. And while performing these conductometric titrations, one should be careful uh, with regards to this one. So, in order to get exact results, the change of volume in the titration should be as small as possible. So, we can achieve this change in volume as small as is by taking 5 to 10 times more concentrated solution in the burette than in the conductivity cell. And now, will uh, the conductometric titrations has advantages over the conventional volumetric titrations in terms of which is highly useful in the case of colored solutions where the selection of indicator is difficult for the determination of end point through volumetrically. And it gives accurate results in case of very dilute or uh, in the case of weak acid and weak bases. And uh, another important advantage is we should not take any care at the end point because the end point is determined through graphically in the case of conductometric titrations. Thank you students.